Growing cassava on an acre of land can see a farmer reap an optimum yield of up to 3 million shillings, about 1,000 US dollars per harvest after value addition. That high quality cassava flow is really high quality. And because of that, it can replace many of the products which are made out of wheat, wheat flour, or made out of uh, cornstarch, uh, bread, biscuit manufacturing, pepper bone manufacturing, even to the extent of making beer out of cassava very soon. If we can just put 5-10% of alcohol from cassava with petrol, we would be saving $17 million per year from importing petrol and diesel. Feed manufacturers want hundreds of metric tons of cassava chips. Immediately, immediate demand now. But the crop is facing extinction from the deadly cassava brown streak virus. <laughs> Stephen Onyeba, a farmer in Kayunga, has been having dwindling yields since 2009. <laughs> Actually, what they should do is burn them. It's Achilles' heel, its real weakness is the pest and diseases. And so, as climate changes also, these pests and diseases can move around. At early detection of the disease, Farmers have been encouraged to harvest the crop earlier to avoid extensive damage, as well as partake of tissue culture, which is done in laboratories. They remove one which is not diseased, then they use that one to now produce more of clean material. And this clean material now are the ones they give to the farmers. The brown streak virus has affected about 30% of the cassava growing districts in the country. <laughs> Now, climatic projections from a team of scientists from Colombia's International Center for Tropical Agriculture, CIET, and CGIAR's Climate Change Agriculture and Food Security Research Center show that in the next 20 years, when temperatures are warmer, cassava will be the only crop that will withstand the harsh climatic conditions compared to main staple foods grown like maize, beans, sorghum, millet, and potatoes. Cassava is the rambo root of all. Of all, uh, of all crops, it's, uh, it's Rambo, it, nothing can kill it basically, it'll, it'll keep producing. It just shuts down so when temperatures get too high or um, um, there's not enough rainfall, the crop just stops, it like hibernates, um, it just stops, stops functioning until the climate becomes uh, uh, favorable again, so, so, so it doesn't really suffer. This will only happen if pests and diseases like the white fly, cassava millibug, cassava mosaic and brown streak are eliminated. There are about eight varieties which have shown resilience to cassava brown streak disease under development by Colombia's SEAT hopes to be available within two years. That material to come in here, we must be able to get them through our biosafety and phytosanitary system. Now what we need is for government to clear those through the biotechnology bill and the biosafety bill so that we start now producing this tolerant material and be able to multiply it in plenty. The key issue right now is that the world, the globe, all countries of the world look for means of um, developing or, or continuing its economic production without emissions of, of carbon dioxide, which comes from cars, it comes from, from uh, uh, factories, from, from industry. You have things like methane, which is coming from um, uh, for example, livestock, it's coming from, from rice, paddy fields. You have nitrous oxides, which are coming off fertilizers, for example. And so all of this is contributing to more, more, of these, more concentration of these gases in the atmosphere, which, me, which then create this, this uh, um, uh, thing we call global warming. If solutions are found early enough, because of its unique adaptability to climate change, the crop could be the only hope for constant food supply for the 500 million Africans who eat it every day. Florence Nalimba, NTV, Ecotalk.